demons exist within the mind and soul. The unnameable, indescribable fears and desires that lurk in the pit of human subconscious. To understand these demons, we name them. The Babylonians called upon Ashtaroth and Asmodeus. Hebrews feared Lilith and Leviathan. Hindus guarded against Rahu and Azazal. Medieval sorcerers invoked Belphegor and Baphomet. In the fictional universe of H.P. Lovecraft, the unwary crossed paths with Yog Shogoth, Hastur the Unspeakable, and the ultimate horror, the great god Cthulhu. These forces of ancient evil have been released in our world again and again over the last century by the black magic of the movies. The devil has been the most omnipresent demon in film mythology. Georges Méliès himself played Old Nick for a trick film in 1896, The Devil's Castle, followed by The Haunted Castle and Laboratory of Mephistopheles within a year. Even a century ago, filmmakers knew the value of sequels. D.W. Griffith achieved a subtler effect with shadows and a tuxedo-clad Adolphe Manjou who revealed his true shape only at the climax. attracted a wide variety of performers, all of whom were up to no good at all. I promised you horror, and I intend to keep that promise. Ladies and gentlemen, we present his satanic majesty, the devil. Beautiful, isn't it? Fair. The trouble with you, Mrs. Scratch, is that you know nothing about painting. I've never pretended to be an art expert. You can leave my message. You'd have to go back. Up there. Tonight at midnight, you will be dead. Just how do you intend to kill me? I have no idea. I don't even know you. <laughs> <laughs> you must see what the devil's messenger has in store for you. That's good. It's possible. Oh, be careful. Please don't. Touch the glue is still wet. That size. Six and a half. But it can be. He, he spoke to me. Hmm? Well, that's no reason to faint dead away. It's quite possible that he spoke to you. I mean, this is Senor Carlos. That's the Countess's husband. Maximilian's stepfather. I mean, why should you have seen him? He was here. <laughs> no, but it is. Don't you see? It can't be. I I know he said I I saw him in his in his casket in the chapel. In the chapel? No, 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 no. You saw this dummy in the coffin. You see, it's a dress rehearsal for the funeral ceremony. Oh, by the way, I dropped it and it broke on the way here, but please don't tell the Countess. I mean, I, I, I fixed it. You can hardly tell, can you? Hmm? The perfect marriage of Robert and Catherine Thorne was fulfilled by the birth of their son, Damien. But on the child's fifth birthday, something terrible happened. Look at me, Damien. It's all for you. This is not a human child. Who is he? What does he want? Where did he come from? And can he be stopped? The Omen. One of the most memorable of movie devils was the inimitable Claude Rains the in the classic Angel on My Shoulder. What'd he do to you? Send you up? 
I was sent down. Not up. Hey. This guy's a judge. I ain't muscling in on no judge's body. What difference does it make? It'll serve your purpose. And mine. Yeah. What happens when he gets up and finds I'm him? When we're through with him, he won't know a thing. Not a single blit. Solitary thing. I think I probably was on a set with him maybe three times. There was a presence about him. There was a, um, he meant business. In Angel Heart, Robert De Niro hires a detective to seek a killer who had sold his soul. Investigator Mickey Rourke wasn't bright enough to realize who his employer was. De Niro's character name was Lou Seifel. You know, it's like doing Hamlet or doing, uh, playing Jesus or whatever. You know, it's, uh, there's so much uh, preconceived, so many preconceived ideas about it. Classic detective story, except that the private detective is employed by a client, and the client happens to be the devil. Demonic strength comes in handy when confronted by a hero the size of a house, as in the Italian film Hercules and the Haunted World. The mythic hero, played by former Mr. Universe Reg Park, combats assorted hellish demons and ultimately the lord of the underworld himself. The idea that I could throw Reg Park around with a flick of my wrist, even with demonic strength, well, it seemed fairly ludicrous. And unfortunately, both Reg and myself began to giggle uncontrollably. Very naughty of us. Director Mario Bava rapidly lost his patience. The two of us, as I've just said, behaved disgracefully. And we did try to finish the scene with straight faces, but I'll tell you, it was hell. One of the best supernatural films ever made would have never showed a demon at all if the director and star had the last word. He has been chosen. I've been chosen for what? What do you mean? Today I found all the pages of my desk calendar torn out after October the 22nd. I know why. He died on the 22nd. John, what's the matter? The same thing happened to my desk calendar after the 28th. We had completed the picture over in England and had returned quite satisfied with the work we had done and uh, much to our chagrin when we saw the picture uh, the uh, producer had uh, put into the picture a mechanical device which had been concocted by the special effects English people and made a real demon which you could see walking through the forest. Skeptical? Don't make up your mind till you see this masterpiece of macabre magic. Because, after all, evil supernatural creatures really do exist. And this, of course, was a tremendous shock to all of us because the, the Oliver Onions uh, story had ended with the remark, maybe it would be better not to know. It takes like 12 hours to change me into a nasty looking demon on Night of the Demons. It was, um, it was very, very like long makeup. So I had the contacts, the teeth, the God, things pulling on my face when you're hooked into this thing for, you know, hours and hours and hours. It's not fun. I could eat, but nobody wanted me to eat with them, you know? It was like, it was lonely existence being a demon. <laughs> The Guy de Maupassant short story, The Hauler, described a demon that may or may not have been simply a figment of a diseased mind. Leave her alone. You will kill her. Oh. I can't. <laughs> Cover your victim with this. Wherever evil exists in the heart of man, the horror lives. 
Would you like to know the secret of the Horla's mysterious power? Come then with me, and I will lead you into the dwelling place of evil itself, where you too will be possessed by the Horla. Howard Phillips Lovecraft was a New England native whose personal demonology was as elaborate as any conceived by any world religion. The demons he imagined in short stories and novels were horrendously loathsome, but he knew when not to describe the indescribable. Whoa, what is this? What's going on? I became a fanatic for Lovecraft, and I became a fanatic, um, I think because, it's like Ramsey Campbell said, Lovecraft is a master technician, and he used to write these stories, and they lead you up to the last sentence, and they chill you, and they leave you right in the dark. H.P. Lovecraft died in 1937. I have in my collection a facsimile of a letter he wrote in 1935 one of my most prized collector's pieces. It shows a small, cramped, very precise hand. Make of that what you will. As you see, he gives his address as the cave of the crumbling bones, and the time of writing of the letter, the hour of the rustling and the slithering. And if memory serves me right, because unfortunately the original letter has disappeared. I think he signs himself yours by the sunken pylon. The Haunted Palace. AIP wanted me to do more Poe films because they were doing very well commercially. And I said, well, I really like Lovecraft, who may not be as great a writer as Poe, but as a very good writer, let me do uh, one of the Lovecraft stories. And I did that, and there was a reference in it somewhere to a haunted palace, and Poe had written a poem called The Haunted Palace. So they just changed the title and said The Haunted Palace. I think the first score he did was The Haunted Palace, and Roger sent him with whatever money he had in cash, which made me very nervous. And I went with him. And um, they recorded uh, in three hours this lush, gorgeous score. And uh, we came back, and I thought, Roger just flipped. He was just so excited about it. But what I try to do is show it in such a way with dim lighting or through some foreground composition or such that you get the idea, but you don't see it clearly. And uh, the Haunted Palace was one of the clearest examples of that theory. Get out of this room. Monster of Terror, also known as Die, Monster, Die, used the Lovecraft short story, The Color Out of Space, as inspiration. The same story was used two decades later for The Curse. What was that? Former set designer Daniel Haller, who directed the Karloff film, followed this four years later with a film a bit closer to the literary source. The Dunwich Horror, based on H.P. Lovecraft's terrifying tale of those who explore the unspeakable. Yeah, Sata. She invites it. You're one of us now. The devil is not exactly noted for his sense of humor. The Crimson Cult. In Dead of Winter, 1968, Boris made his last film in Britain. 
Whatever reservations I had about the script went by the wayside. I wanted to act with Boris one more time. The film wasted a really first-rate cast, and the puzzling twist ending revealed that Barbara Steele and I were actually the same person. But we all know the subconscious mind can play strange, sometimes terrifying tricks. The living bridge between this world and the unknown. Do you believe in evil? As an idea. Do you believe in the power of darkness? As a superstition. Now there you are wrong. The power of darkness is more than just a superstition. It is a living force which can be tapped at any given moment of the night. I remember Tony Hines ringing me and saying, Jimmy, you've got to do a very good job on this because I don't think it's working. I'm not happy with it. Uh, he might deny this, but I'm sure he said it to me. And he, he said, come down and on set, if you like, and see how things are going. And I, I went down and I thought it all looked splendid. Anyway, he was quite wrong in his judgment, wasn't he? My God, the goat of Bendis, the devil himself. He once breaks into the circle. If we once catch sight of his face. <laughs> Remake, anyone? Like H.P. Lovecraft, Clive Barker has created through books and films a demonic world unique to his time. You can't go down there! <laughs> Clive Barker, creator of Hellraiser, brings you a reason to really be afraid of the dark. I think one of the interesting things about the Hellraiser series, and one of the things the fans of the series seem to enjoy, is that although we use the word hell in, in every title so far, there's no real suggestion that we're dealing with a, a traditional Judeo-Christian hell. And there's no real suggestion that, that Pinhead and his fellow Cenobites are Satan's demons. It's really a, a self-created and self-consistent mythology or, or theology, or demonology, I suppose. Part of the Cenobite aesthetic is, is a kind of a very dark elegance. But we wanted us still to be sexy in, uh, in an admittedly bizarre way. You know, I'd love to take credit for, for, for the full detail of the look, but I mean, that was the work of Gary Tonicliffe of Bob Keane's Image Animation who came up with, with that design. Italian director Dario Argento exorcises his own demons by putting them on film and sending them out into a terrifying world. He's a very nice man. He works exactly like Louis Bunuel. And what he'll do is he'll come down in the mornings and he'll talk to his screenwriter and he'll describe his dreams. The screenwriter will write down the dream. And this will go on for a month or two until they have a series of dreams which are then hooked together in a story. You can run from Suspiria. The demon of Nightmare on Elm Street appeared from the black pit of the subconscious in deadly dreams, striking responsive chords in young audiences. In many ways, he was archetypal and deceptive, magically powerful, entering the mind while it slept like the classic incubus. He also had a name, Freddy Krueger. Crucifix, seven, eight, gonna stay up late, nine, ten. Freddy's back on 
demon inhabiting young Linda's lair was named Azuzu. Although Jesuit psychologist Jason Miller assumed it was merely a figment of the little girl's imagination. There are no experts. You probably know as much about possession as most priests. Look, your daughter doesn't say she's a demon. She says she's the devil himself. Demons are notorious for evading the truth. Take me! Come into me! Take me! Producers with an eye on ticket sales rather than taste made similarly outlandish films which played primarily to less discerning audiences. Director Mario Bava emphasized visual style, not surprisingly, as he was also an expert cameraman. In the wake of The Exorcist, impressionable people claimed they too were possessed by demons. Well-meaning fools spent long hours exorcising them. After the omen in 1976, many people confessed to being the Antichrist. After Poltergeist in 1982, frantic families claimed that demons had invaded their home. These people are not as crazy as they might first appear. The demons they fear are very real. They are as close as the nearest movie theater or TV set, or the deep recesses of the human mind.